When I first journeyed to Tibet in the late 1990s, I was on a pilgrimage in the footsteps of a 19th century Tibetan mystic named Tertun Sogyal. A horse riding bandit turned meditation master, Tertun Sogyal eventually became the teacher to the 13th Dalai Lama, the predecessor to the current Dalai Lama. The more time I spent in Tibet, searching out the life stories and teachings of Tertun Sogyal, the more trust I seemed to garner in the Tibetans who I spoke to. And when that trust was established, what they wanted to tell me was what they see as an occupation of their homeland by the Chinese. They wanted to talk to me about politics. They wanted to tell me stories of the oppression that they, that they are feeling. And soon the, the Tibetans started to ask me to spirit out documentation and photographs of human rights abuses. They wanted me to take out documents that showed the expulsion no notices from monasteries and nunneries. Um, Tibetan uh, Buddhist teachers uh, showed me scars that they experienced in prison from, uh, from when they were tortured by the authorities for expressing their peaceful views. Uh, I was taken to see one Tibetan Lama who was scalded with, with hot water and thrown into jail for five years simply for holding up a photograph of the Dalai Lama and encouraging others to pray for his long life. My experiences in Tibet showed me that how Tibetans' faith for the Dalai Lama, their, their devotion to Tibetan Buddhism, and their feeling of nationalism, of nationhood, are inextricably linked. But from the Chinese perspective, this this faith that Tibetans have in their religion and in specifically in the Dalai Lama, the Chinese government sees this as, as political. They see it as political because they see the Dalai Lama as the single greatest threat to the unity of China. Despite this, despite intimidation, despite detentions, despite arrests and even deaths, Tibetans have not lost their resolve and their deep conviction in their Tibetan Buddhist faith, in their devotion to the Dalai Lama, and to the aspiration that one day they will be free. China wants the world to forget about Tibet. They want the governments around the world to forget about the Tibetans. And today, thousands of Tibetans languish in prisons across the Tibetan Plateau. When I found out about these prisons, when I found out the locations of them, and essentially how to get a bird's eye view of them by uh, ascending certain uh, mountains or hillsides, where I could take pictures of them, where I could show how the prisoners are treated inside, I couldn't help myself. I, I, had, I had to go there and, 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 and take these pictures. Because I know that in those prisons there are monks, there are nuns, there's lay people who have expressed their peaceful political views, have expressed their yearning for the Dalai Lama to return to Tibet, and for this they're held in, in, in those prisons. <laughs>